morning. Welcome to all of you who are here in person and welcome to any of those watching online or the recorded version of the service. Thank you so much for participating in whichever way you are able. We're going to begin with a brief uh, talk from Pamela Little uh, before I give the rest of the announcements. Good morning. I just want to give you an update on the capital campaign and where we stand financially. Um, I'm not sure how many of you saw the newsletter article that I wrote, but uh, to date we have raised just over $9,000 on the capital campaign. We are, that's through June. Um, we had hoped at this point to have raised half of our 200,000. So as you can see, we are extremely behind that goal. That said, the good news is that our expenses are running less than, our, than the income we're bringing in. And the way we have been able to manage without taking money from our funds is because of the generosity of the many committees through their fundraising efforts, through some members who have donated separately from the capital campaign. Um, normally, this time of the year, we've taken out over fifty thousand dollars. You know, on the average, between fifty and seventy-five thousand from investments to meet our expenses. We have not had to do that this year. So that's, that's very good news. Um, where we're really going to find ourselves in a bind if this campaign doesn't pick up is with the major repairs that we have to do. You know, many of you are aware that, you know, we need to do something with the skylights, with the air conditioner. Um, there's Roof is leaking. You know, there's a lot of big repairs that we need to seriously look at. And we're really hoping to build up the repairs and restoration account to offset some of those so we wouldn't have to go into investments. Um, we're definitely not, not meeting that part of the goal. So I just ask that you continue to pray ask the good Lord, you know, what he would like to see you do. Um, you know, it's not just monetary that will benefit us, but, you know, volunteers with special skills, um, you know, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. So it's a good news story because we're meeting expenses. We haven't had to take out of investments, but we'd really like to see the campaign do a lot better than it is. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to see me or you can see Jean. You know, she's got all the financial numbers. Um, and I appreciate your time and I also appreciate your generosity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pamela. So quickly going through the other announcements now. Uh, Bible study at the normal times this week, Tuesday at 6 p.m. on Zoom, Wednesday here at 10, Tai Chi meets here at 11, uh, quilters meet at 1 on Wednesday, um, worship and music committee will be this coming week, uh, Thursday the 25th at 6 p.m. You can always use new members to that committee, it's a great committee, but uh, if you have an interest in being on the worship and music committee, we'd love to have you. Uh, we have now some uh, vendors who will be setting up the first, I'm sorry, the, uh, the second Saturday of each uh, month uh, in concert with the farmer's market. So from uh, 10 to 1, we have vendors here in the narthex. Some are from this parish, uh, some are not. And so you're welcome to become a vendor yourself or to come shopping in here after you've uh, done your farmer's market shopping out here. Uh, the next summer concert is the Stay Tuned Band, and it's August 10th. These are really fun, and uh, so I'm, I'm very much encouraging you to uh, join us for that. You can bring a, bring a blanket, a lawn chair, bring a, 
uh, light supper, although we may also have a, uh, a hot dog cart uh, available. We're working that out as we speak. Uh, but in any case, the music is really fun and the fellowship is really fun. So weather permitting, we sit outside and have a good staff. So uh, August 10th. Uh, VBS uh, now has been uh, abbreviated just a little bit because we didn't have a very large uh, sign-up. So we're going to be meeting on Monday, Tuesday, and uh, Wednesday. Monday and Tuesday will be 9 to 1.30, and Wednesday will be 9 to noon. And we'll compress our lessons into that time uh, for the kids that have signed up. And, and uh, it's going to be a good PBS, I can assure you of that. Any other announcements that I have forgotten that you would like shared this morning? Then I invite the children to come forward. I'm sorry, I invite the congregation to stand for the confession and absolution. confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Any children may come forward. I got one. You guys can come down and like it. Got one. A class of one. How cool is that? I said earlier in the summer that we would be talking about some people in the Bible that don't get talked about quite as much as Jesus and some of those uh, these characters. And this week. There's a commemoration on our church calendar of Mary Magdalene. Do you know that name, Stevie? Ma Mary Magdalene? There's a picture over here. You can have this. Mary Magdalene was a woman who was very close to Jesus and she cared about him very much. And so when, you know, Jesus died on the cross and they put him in a tomb, they buried him in a, in a little cave. And nobody knew that he was going to come back alive. So Mary Magdalene, she was the first person to go back there to, you know, to check on him and to maybe, maybe anoint his body with oils or something like that. And when she got there, the tomb was empty. He wasn't in there. And then she heard a, somebody say her name, Mary. And she looked and it was Jesus. He was alive. This is a great story. I tell this story. He was alive. And so she's all excited and doesn't know what to do, because this is really weird, you know, to find somebody alive who'd been buried already. But that's what she found. And so he says to Mary, you can see that that's what's happening right in this picture there. He says to her, I want you to go and tell all my other followers that you see me alive. That means Mary Magdalene is the first preacher of the resurrection. Mary Magdalene is the first preacher of the resurrection. Apparently, some of the guys felt like that was enough. They could take it from there. But she's a very important person in the story. And so when we remember her on the church calendar, we think, oh, what a faithful, good woman she was. To go there to see him when she thought he was still dead, and then to go and tell the story of him being alive. And because she told that story, and because they, the other people believed that story and saw Jesus later, 
That's why we're all here. None of us would be here in this room if that hadn't happened. It's all about that story. So we're very grateful for Mary Magdalene and her faithfulness. Okay? I have a little uh, keychain for you, too. Just, just something to have. Okay. Thank you very much for coming forward, and you all for attending to the most important sermon of the day. The congregation may stand now for the singing of our opening hymn, 645, Christ has made the sure foundation.
be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the readings of Scripture. The first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 to 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doing, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks. We will chant Psalm 23. The second reading is from the Ephesians, chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 11 to 22. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called, the un called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no help and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. That is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the wall with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile himself with, <clears throat> and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. 
So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of, both of us have access to one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens of the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Congregation, we stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Mm -hmm. according to Mark in the sixth chapter. The apostles gathered around Jesus, told him all that they had done and taught, and he said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while, for many were coming and going. They had no leisure even to eat. They went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns ahead of them. And as he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him, and he rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces, begged him, that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this day from God the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the reconciler. He is the one who in his own blood and sacrifice brings us from far away to near, near to him, near to God, but also near to each other. Imagine, if you will, in your mind's eye, the, the cross as a center point of the people of the world coming, coming toward the cross, coming toward the cross, coming toward the cross, and what's happening? They are, in fact, then coming closer to each other as that circle begins to narrow down. It says in Paul that, uh, that there's a, a dividing wall dividing wall of hostility. If you're not aware of it, in Paul's time, there was actual malicious animosity between Jews and Gentiles. That is to say, between the Jewish population and everybody else. And if you weren't born in the lineage of Abraham, if you were not born into a Jewish family, you were one of those people who was kept outside the blessings of God by the wall of hostility between those groups. And Jesus said, in effect, in his, in his ministry and in his teachings, I'm going to knock that wall down. I'm going to demolish the dividing wall of hostility between people so that they may be one in me, one in the Lord, and one as a community of grace in the world. It is not of God for us to set ourselves against anybody. God's will is for us to draw people ever closer into a unified, praise-filled, grace-filled, loving, compassionate humanity. We have some work to do. I say that is perhaps the most important work of the body of Christ, the church, in this time and in this place. Because you know as well as I do that there are dividing walls of hostility all around. Some of them are quite high and steep and strong. And the hostility is palpable. You can feel it in the air. Even some Christians, I'm sorry to say, seem to think that their job is to help build this wall. It's not in Scripture. That's not what Jesus came for. 
And so our task, you know, we want to proclaim Christ. But the, the proclaiming of the word Jesus Christ means little if we continue to live back in the way that Paul described, where, the, where there are these walls of hostility are separating us from one another, even within our own church. I lived through the time when the Missouri Synod broke apart back in the early 70s. It was horrible, horrible to watch Lutherans fight with one another. And thankfully right now we don't have that in our denomination. We have a, a pretty peaceful time. And we've come to a great reconciliation with our other Christian neighbors. So we are no longer suspicious or fearful or, or angry at, at the Roman Catholics and the Episcopalians and the Presbyterians and so on. We are in fact seeing each other as part of the body of Christ the way he intended it. The dividing walls of hostility have come down. And of course, following the, especially following the Second World War, in a political way that's also happened. Those countries, you know, Japan and the United States, or Germany and England, for example, those animosities, which were so, so real and so deadly, have now fallen so that these countries are allies together. The dividing wall of hostility, not always done in a spirit of faith in those cases, but still somehow rooted in this vision of a world that is not torn asunder. So if you're gonna talk about Jesus, loudly, softly, or in between, you will be more understandable and more believed if you also represent the tearing down of the walls of hostility. In other words, if you can relate to other people in the world as though you, in fact, wanted to be part of a community of, of humanity with them. They're not your enemies. They're not your foes. They're not competitors. They're brothers and sisters in, in the human family, at least, and if they have any faith, they're brothers and sisters in the Lord. And if we somehow, in the way we speak, or the way we move, or the, or the topics we address, if, if we somehow send a signal that, yeah, there's still quite a wall here, it's time for that to come down. Past. And that will be a signal to the world about the kind of vision Christ has for a future that is really livable for all of us. This is not an easy task I'm calling you to. It's a little bit like Jesus saying, love your enemies. Because there are people that, well, they set us off, don't they? My, my poor wife can't help but yell at the TV every morning. <laughs> and her mother was the same way. And I'm calmly trying to say, you know, But people get under our skin. There are, there are all kinds of these opinions out there and these actions, and they seem crazy to us. But if we allow these tumultuous times to set us against one another, then we have failed to grasp one of those basic concepts that Jesus taught. It says in the scripture here that the people flocked to him and he healed them, and he taught them many things. I don't think they all knew when they first came. They came out of their own need. I don't think they knew they were gonna be taught that they were going to have to love and live with Gentiles. But that's where it went. Thank God, because otherwise we wouldn't be here. So now the task is ours. Christ has bestowed upon us the Holy Spirit, all the teachings we need, all the freedom we need, to in fact go out into this, this barricaded place called the world and say, this wall can come down. This wall can come down. This wall can come down. We are not divided. We are united. We are one. We are intended to be one together as people and together under God. And you have the capacity in your daily life to act like that so. That's your call. Right for Christ. Amen. Our hymn of the day, 780, Shepherd Me, O God.
I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We will sing, listen to your children pray, and then have the prayers of the church. Marsha will play the tune. Having set aside all hostility between people, Christ calls us to a life of prayer for our neighbor's sake. For the whole human race, that whatever struggles they face, they may seek God's healing presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our wounded world, that it may be restored, and that we may be agents of its restoration. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the victims of war, especially the children, those who die, those who lose loved ones, those traumatized by what they have seen, that we may seek to build a world which does not forsake the young. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For ourselves, that our grateful hearts may overflow in generosity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For any needs you now lift in silence or out loud, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all these and any other needs, we offer our prayers in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please share a sign of God's peace.
and glorify you. You we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image. And with mercy higher than the mountains and grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, strange and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love, and fold in your arms all we share this holy food, and nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree sharing your bounty with all the world. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing. Until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. As we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please be seated briefly as we commune the assistance and then invite you to receive these gifts of the body and blood of Christ. Congregation may come forward now to receive the body and blood of our Lord.
God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God of all grace, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is 654, The Church's One Foundation. 